Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the number one sports show on the entire planet. I'm your host, Drake Tharp, and we are at episode number 14. And I'd just like to wish you all Merry Christmas. Christmas happened over since the last episode. Um, speaking of which, the giveaway winner was announced on my Instagram story this morning. Congratulations to Nate Helwig on the one-of-a-kind Drake's Corner t-shirt uh, winning. Um, no, there is no bias at all. I did a random name generator on the thing. Spun the wheel. There it was. Nate Helwig, you are the winner. Congratulations. You will receive your t-shirt, um, soon. I, <laughs> you'll get your t-shirt. Don't worry. Um, speaking of which, Drake's Corner merch will be upcoming here soon. Um, just have, you know, get a few things together with my team, but, uh, we'll have some t-shirts incoming for the show. Um, very exciting things, very exciting things are going on, um, but without th- further ado, let's get into the show. Um, you know, with my first section here, I don't, I don't, I don't like to get, I don't like to get political on the show, um, this is a sports, this is a sports show, we leave the politics out of sports, that's how it should be, um, but the uh, first thing I want to talk about is really just the Omicron variant of COVID, and it's spiraling through each sports league that we know um, my Twitter was blowing up. I've, I had a few post notifications from uh, Adrian Wodge, Adrian Wodge that, I can't say his last name, and uh, Field Yates. they all reporting on these players all going into COVID protocol. Um, it's, a, it's a tweet every five seconds w- with the amount of players going into protocol. And I thought, you know, this year we have the, uh, whatever your beliefs are, we have the vaccine, um, we have, you know, We understand the virus a lot more than we did um, when sports, when the NBA was shut down last year. Luckily, the NFL um, reached their, uh, the Super Bowl had already happened before, you know, the entire lockdown, and they hit their offseason before, you know, really anything started. But with the NBA, uh, NHL, MLB, all those things completely shut down. Um, And when the NBA came back, there was no fans in the arena. They all they all had it done at Disney Disney World down in Florida. No fans in the arena. No in nothing. No environment. And you know you could say the Lakers championship championship was kind of an asterisk here. Um, you put an asterisk by the championship and you say, hey, is this is this a the league was paused in the middle of the season. Is this a real championship? Um, I'm hoping that this year isn't like that, especially with two leagues now in jeopardy, the NFL, um, NBA, even March Madness. March Madness was taken out in 2020 as well. Um, it, it was a terrible time for sports. Um, and I'm really hoping this year it doesn't lead to that. Um, I mean, the meaningfulness of championships is now in jeopardy because of new variants. Um, we don't know what this variant's going to do. They're saying it's going to lead to a common cold. I don't know. Um, but I really hope this we can have a normal year of sports, especially, I mean, we have everything. This is the prime time of sports. You got NFL playoffs about to start, NBA midseason almost here. March Madness is three months away. We're st- starting, and then you have the college football playoffs about to start. We have everything... Um, going on right now and it's a terrible time for this to happen um the covid protocol could ruin another year of sports uh i really hope it doesn't because for example we saw um you know the joe burrow's amazing performance against the ravens um bengals quarterback joe burrow threw for 525 yards now if you look at the secondary none of their star players like marcus peters um Guys, guys along those lines, none of their starting defense was playing. And uh, Joe Burrow put up incredible stats. Now, then again, half their defense was in protocol. So that's one of those things, like, it's an asterisk next to his name. Um, in my opinion, at least, it's still incredible to throw for a 525, but against, you know, a bunch of Foot Locker employees, basically, it's not the greatest thing in the world. Now, um, we saw a lot of sports leagues, like, Hats off to the NBA for adapting in the way that they did, putting it, you know, the uh, the bubble, the NBA bubble into place. Um, even look at the WWE. They made a Thunderdome. They had uh, webcam 
footage of their fans and they placed them in square center square boxes in the crowd. Um, it was awesome. I mean, it wasn't. It was awesome for the moment, but we all want to see fans back in. But I'm really just you know. The meaningfulness of championships, it's really in jeopardy with, you know, the amount of protocol procedures that is going on. Um, in my opinion, the Lakers championship they won in 2020, um, you know, really didn't mean a whole lot, like as much as a, another championship would, like the Bucks, for example. They had a championship win. Um, it was real. There was no pause to the season. There was no, no you know, big COVID protocols. Um, it meant a lot more, and I'm just hoping these championships that the teams in the big sports leagues that they win will be meaningful. I really hope COVID doesn't ruin that again. And um, you, everyone, to each their own with their own opinions involving you know the meaningfulness of championships, um, COVID or not. Um, but it would really just suck. I mean, players' legacies are on the line, teams are on the line, businesses are on the line. Um, you know, I really think kind of something has to be done um, environmentally and institutionally with um, this new variant. Um, if it's, you know, really a huge deal, um, you know, some are saying it's going to turn into the common cold, like I said earlier. Um, but, you know, keep the politics out of it. Um, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on, uh, you know, does COVID affect the meaningfulness of, like, say, a... Um, championship compared to this year like last year or the year before uh compared to you know lebron 2016 Cavs 31 comeback versus the warriors like how is it's a ring on the finger i know but when you look at it it's like oh lebron has three rings but he's got that one the covid year did it mean a lot i don't know something to talk about there anyway speaking of the nba um you know, I was taking a look. You know, my favorite teams are Chicago teams. I like the Chicago Bulls, Chicago Bears. Those are my those are my teams. I love the Bulls. Um, I grew up on the. I didn't grow up obviously in the Jordan era. Um, I was born in 02. I kind of grew up on the Derrick Rose, Joakim Noah, Luol Deng version of the Bulls. And you know, since Jimmy Butler and Derrick Rose left, um, the Bulls have been absolute absolutely terrible since uh both of those guys have left and it's been a rebuilding stage for the last i don't know five years um kind of like throughout my entire um stint in high school um my bulls were completely re rebuilding um and now it seems uh they're second in the east they're on a four game win streak largest in the east um they have you know kind of a big four rather than you know most teams like the nets lakers we in even um you know, the Warriors kind of have that big three, you know, um, kind of Draymond, Steph, and Clay. With the Lakers, you got Russ, AD, LeBron, Nets, Harden, Irving, and KD. Um, but, you know, with the Bulls, I kind of see, if you play a lot of 2K, you'll understand what, I, what I'm saying with this. I see 485 overall players rather than 390 overall players. And, I, and, I've, and I've come to wonder, is that is that a real deal concept that, can win a championship, you know, if you're a, if you're a big 2K player or somebody who watches sports, would you rather have four 85 overall players on your starting lineup or um, three 90s? I mean, um, you know, big 2K players, comment down what you'd, what you'd want. But, you know, with Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, uh, DeRozan, Vucevic, that's the big four that the Bulls have. Um, we'll see. We'll see how... It, pans out but um you know to be honest you can't really tell who the real deal teams in the nba are until you know right before the playoffs or you know kind of after the all-star break um nobody would have nobody would have thought that the suns last year when they were you know taking teams out had a very solid record that hey they're this is just coincidental but then they took out the lakers i mean i don't i i don't know who called the suns beating the lakers i'm sure not a lot of people did um, just because of the Le Le LeBron effect and um, and whatnot, and you know the Suns have never been like a uh, championship contender. It was something new, um, but hey, with this, um, the Nets with their big three didn't make the championship. The Lakers first round exit last year. The Warriors, uh, you know, it's kind of hit or miss with them right now. We haven't seen a fully healthy 
uh, Warriors team since whew, two years ago, three, almost three years ago now. Um, and KD was their last in at the playoffs. So um, right now we have teams like the Bucks and Suns, young, young and upcoming. And I kind of see that deal with here with the Bulls. Um, DeRozan was a piece that they added. A lot of people were critics of it, um, but it took a lot of heat off Zach Levine and gave him another scorer to worry about. And now Levine and DeRozan can complement each other, and they have a great distributor in Lonzo Ball and Nikola Jokic, or not Jokic, uh, Vucevic. Down low, great scoring center, good rebounder. Um, this team seems like it has the pieces right now to be a playoff contender. But it's kind of that superstar, you know, the stars always go the farthest. MVP Giannis last year. The year before that, LeBron. I mean, uh, the year before that, Kawhi. It's the superstar factor. And if, you know, your, your best player is DeRozan, is that going to carry you deep into the playoffs? We'll have to see. Uh, personally, I'd rather... Um, you know, I like the four headed monster that they have that 485 overalls, like I was talking about the 2k analogy. I like it. I think it's, you know, kind of a newer concept that, uh, teams are using, you know, like the Suns last year, I, I'd say that they had 485 overalls. They didn't really have a big three. They kind of had a uh, very deep team, not a one player going off every single night. Um, it was always Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Aiton, even Mikel Bridges was playing well. Um, and you had guys like Cam Johnson shooting well. Uh, the campaign, Cham, Cam Champagne, he was going nuts too, the backup point guard. They just had a deep team, and I think it's a newer concept that'll be, um, you know, kind of the future of the NBA, it seems. I don't know. I really like I really like uh, how the Bulls are looking right now as a fan, personally. Um, but when you guys, you, you have... Uh, to play KD and Giannis in the playoffs, it's kind of that superstar factor. Like, whoa, how are we going to stop them? We'll see, though. We'll see. Anyways, off the court and onto the gridiron, let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Now we're jumping from the Midwest to the South here. Um, the Cowboys, you know, they won fifty. They scored fifty six points. I don't know the Washington. They won by over forty points, though. Um, they're fully healthy again, and um, it seems to be fully healthy. They are next to the Packers as the most talented team when healthy. You can argue with me all you want. The Bucks here and there, the the Rams, they have stars. But when I see um, chemistry, chemistry-wise, the Packers and the Cowboys have the most on the NFC side, without a doubt. Um, with the Cowboys, I see a lot more talent on the receiver side. Um, you know, the difference between um, Tom Brady throwing the ball and... Aaron Rodgers, you know, sometimes they force those balls in there. When you see Dak calm and poised and they have a fully healthy receiving core, the receivers do it all for Dak. Dak just has to make the night the right decision. I There's rare times when there's not a receiver open for the Cowboys on a play. Um, I've seen numerous times, you know, Brady gets sacked and get pissed at his O-line or he for, forces a ball in, like, on that shutout game against the Saints. I've, I've been seeing it all year, and the Cowboys, when they're not fully healthy— those have been the times when they're, um, you know, in a funk, it seems. Um, personally, I see them back in the Super Bowl bubble when they're fully healthy. They have a great, young, stifling defense. Um, they have stars everywhere. They have a lot of, you know, stars that don't shoot off the paper, but stars that, you know, complement each other. Amari Cooper, CD Lamb, that whole receiving core with Zeke, getting the run game, and Tony Paul are, you know, you know developing stars, not like, Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Leonard Fournette. Like, those are stars that jump off the sheets. But these Cowboys are young and hungry right now. Um, they have stars, but not as superstar factored as, like, you know, the Rams when you have OBJ jumping off the sheets. Um, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, defensive guys like that. Um, but chemistry-wise, I think the Cowboys click a lot better than the Rams and the Bucks. I mean, we've seen the Bucks inconsistency. And it's um, it'll it'll hurt them in the playoffs, in my opinion. I I've been a critic of their inconsistency, and I'm gonna continue to be. Um, yeah, it's I just because I see Tom Brady on a team, I'm not gonna. I think it's kind of the same concept with the NBA. You see a lot more, um, you know, well well balanced teams coming into the mix rather than just superstar playing. That's why we saw the 49ers in the Super Bowl two years ago. That's why um, I think last year was kind of different. Um, you know, not a lot of teams expected 
Tom Brady to be the same guy in the Bucks, but he was, and that's why they won the Super Bowl. Um, you know, I just think it's all about balance now. It's before it wasn't always about that. It was the same superstar thing. Um, that's why the Patriots made like seven Super Bowls in a row. Um, but you know, the Cowboys, I see them as as good as the Rams, better than the Bucks right now. But fully healthy, man, that's a team to watch out for. With the COVID protocols I was talking about earlier with the Omicron variant, the I there were reports here that the Colts call up old Phillip Rivers on the phone and ask him to throw the ball a little bit. Uh, Carson Wentz hit the protocol list here this morning, um, and there were reports that uh, Phillip Rivers was on the phone, and it kind of brought the question to me. You know, I was I was laying down in my bed and I had a uh, I had a Capri Sun in my hand. I was naked, um, and I and I was like. You know, what type of condition does just a regular pocket passer need to be in? Because you know, guys like Drew Brees are hitting the golf course. Guys like, you know, Brett Favre in his Wrangler jeans, mowing the lawn, probably have a gut going on. Um, but what, you know, if for a pocket passer to sit up and say, hey, I'm going to go throw the ball for my old team again. I mean, if you remember, um, I was probably younger, but I remember this vividly. Teams were calling up Brett Favre when he was about 44, 45. Um, ask him to come throw the ball again. And it seems a lot more like that, obviously, with pocket passers because all they need is that that arm. Um, it's just crazy. I mean, if you look at Ben Roethlisberger, there's no way that these guys can be in worse condition um, than, say, you know, Phillip Rivers or Drew Brees or maybe even Brett Favre right now. I, I would put my money – it'd be a tight bet, but I might put my money that Brett Favre is probably in better condition than Ben Roethlisberger right now. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. But um, – you know, Drew Brees was called up by the Saints. They had serious consideration about it. But then, once again, the golf course called his name. I, I understand completely. But, um, you know, it kind of just brings up the question, um, man, is that is the right arm all you need to, to sling the ball? Um, obviously, that was a dumb question. But, um, man, conditioning or just throwing the ball to whoever's open, it really doesn't take a lot of conditioning or – you know, to call up a guy like Philip Rivers and get him off the couch and come play ball. It's it's funny. It's cool. I think it's cool. Um, just to see that, you know, one one attribute that they have throwing is all they need to put their trust in their first team offense with them. It's cool. It's really cool. I really think it is. Um yeah, it's just crazy that you can just call up forty year old guys and say, Hey, you wanna come sling the ball for the uh for an NFL team? Uh, you know the, the number one football league in the world uh, i don't know yeah it's just it's funny to me anywho done with that segment um kind of a shorter show of we've hit the finale but you guys are gonna like it insist the list again uh nfl power rankings uh kicking the sh- kicking the show um for the finale here um here we go nfl power rankings after week 16 yeah 16 um you get Last week, number 10 was the Steelers. I was completely wrong about that. Um, I like this number 10 spot. You know, it could really be a plethora of teams like the Bengals. Um, you know, you still got the Chargers had a bad loss. I don't think they're as bad as they looked. I think that was a trap game. But I'm going give it to give it to a team here that, you know, looked awful, but they're on a seven-game win streak. Miami Dolphins at number 10. Yep. They're back in the playoff picture. What what can you say? They just beat the Saints team that beat the Bucks. Uh Completely different team now. Uh, they have an easy schedule, but they're now in the playoff picture. Um, their defense is no joke. I really think they have a great secondary. Um, Tua seems like the guy that they're, you know, there was a lot of talk about not being so sure about Tua, but now it seems like this is the guy they want to lean on. Um, defense has really come up big for them. That's They're on a seven-game win streak, not the best, you know, heat of schedule, but they're in the playoff picture. And, you know, in the AFC, I really think they can, if Derrick Henry's still out, they might be able to take on the Titans. Um, I could see them beating an inconsistent Bills team. Um, they're on a seven-game win streak. They're sitting at number 10 for me. Um, there's, you know, if I see them play the Bengals, they have a way better secondary than the Ravens just beat them. Um, Dolphins did beat the Ravens. So, um, you know, I think it'd be a good game. I think they can compete with top AFC teams, depending on the type of week that uh, they had the depending on the team that you know comes in on both sides um but yeah they're sitting at number 10 here seven game winning streak what can you say they just beat the saints team uh 
that just beat the Bucks. So there they have number nine right below them. I got the Bucks. Highly here. I've been a critical of them all year. They're highly overrated, but they still have Tom Brady. I'll give them that. Their defense really doesn't make big plays anymore. Okay, they just trounced the Panthers. I get that, but um, that's a mediocre team. Uh, I need to see more out of them. They haven't beaten really. Any best win they've had this year is probably the Colts. Um, highly inconsistent, fully healthy. They're a top five team. I'll give them that. They don't have Mike. They have uh, they lost Chris Godwin. Their defense is looking mediocre at best. Uh, Leonard Fournette's on the IR, um, but now they don't have anything to lean on besides Brady and Mike Evans and Gronk heading into the playoffs. Um, but hey, they have Tom Brady. Who knows? Um, they're in the top ten for a reason. I still have them there, but. You know, inconsistency is going to bite them, I think. Um, for, yeah, for you know, for a number nine team, I give them a lot of criti- criticism, but um, it's the Brady factor. When you have the GOAT, um, you're going to have a more critical uh, opinion from me. That's, that's just how it's going to go. Sorry. Uh, number eight, I got the Titans. You know, they've developed a pass game with A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown has had an amazing last three games. Um, personally, it's going to make them better. They don't have to rely on Derrick Henry running the ball 40 times, uh, every game. We know their defense is good. Um, they're most likely going to win their division. Uh, they've beaten the Colts twice when they're healthy. Uh, those are two huge wins. Um, they've had some bad losses, but when fully healthy, I think they're dangerous. I think they can go deep into the playoffs. Really depends on, you know, what type of team heads into the game and if they have Derrick Henry. Um, but they don't have to fully rely on uh, running the ball every play now when A.J. Brown is playing the way he is. Um, once again, they have a great secondary, um, great front seven. I like them. They're a good balanced team, but um, there's a few better teams in the AFC, uh, like the Patriots at number seven. Uh, they've seemed to kind of been figured out. I don't want to say they've been figured out because teams that lean on their defense will never be figured out. That's a great asset to have as a team. The issue is uh, Mac Jones, and they have zero pass game. We we know their d- defense is one of the best in the NFL, if not the best. Uh, they have a great secondary, amazing pass rush, a great run game. Um, I believe they can still make a deep playoff run, uh, maybe to the AFC title game. Uh, that's uh, It all depends on clock management and quality control, in my opinion. We know Belichick, no, he's been there, done that. We know that they can make a deep playoff run. They've shown signs of that they were in my list at number two probably um three weeks two or three weeks ago probably the last three or four weeks they've been up there in the top 10 top five area um you know but they need to keep winning obviously to stay there uh so they're at number seven number six i got the bills they just beat the patriots uh you know they weren't in even they i wasn't so sure about them that's why they weren't sitting in my top 10 um i kind of you know, tried not to talk about them because I don't know what team they're going to bring every week. Uh, they look like last year's team, though, against uh, Titans and the Patriots. Uh, they just took down two good teams in back-to-back weeks. They'll finish, though, they have the Jets and Falcons left on the season, so they'll finish 11-6 and six on the season. That's a great record. So with that momentum hitting into the playoffs, I think we can see an, an, an AFC championship push. This AFC is so competitive. I, I like it a lot. Um, you know, but if they bring that same... Uh, mentality with that momentum as they had last year, I think it most definitely they can make the AFC title game. Um, number five, I got the Colts. Now this is my pick for the uh, one of the one of the AFC championship contenders. They just look completely dead, deadly right now. They're beating good teams. Um, they played a fully healthy Bucks team down to the wire. Uh, using the run game to open up the pass game is effective. They're one of the best wild card teams I've seen. Uh, I do think they can make a run at the AFC title here. Um, it'll be a good game. Um, the other contenders at the bottom of the list just wait, but I think they can make a run at the AFC title. Um, Jonathan Taylor, we know how good he is. Um, you know they're opening. Wentz is somehow good now. Um, their defense manages yards per game like none other. They're they're a wild card team right now because of the Titans, but they're I, I think it's obvious that they're better than the Titans right now. They played the Titans earlier on in the season. They lost both times, but that was Week Five and Week Eight, I believe, is early. Um, but they just look deadly right now. They're beating good teams. They're controlling clock. You, yards per game is uncanny if you look at their stats. 
Uh, number four, I got the Cowboys. Here's an NFC team after, what, four straight AFC teams? But I got the Cowboys here. Like I said earlier, I kind of gave them a parade. Uh, they're, when they're fully healthy, they're up there with Green Bay. Dak uses, you know, his receivers are so good that there there's a guy open every play. He just has to make the right decision every single play. That's all he has to do is just make the right decision. And it makes his stats look great. It did Sunday night um, with the receiving talent. Um, their run game is solid. Uh, could be better with the run game with uh, Pollard and Zeke, but um, there's still both stars. They're just a great all-around team. Young, stifling defense. I like them a lot. They're one of the best balanced teams in the league. Number three, I got the Rams. I think the Rams are just a tad better than them. Uh, I kind of think I think they're in the same vicinity though. It could it's a toss up if they ever meet in the playoffs. Uh, they look deadly their last three games. Their stars are playing good. OBJ Von Miller, Von Miller actually got his first sack um, with the Rams. Cooper Cup is still doing his thing. He's one of the best system receivers I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> system receiver. I'm never. I'm not gonna say he's you know best receiver in the NFL. He's a great system receiver. Uh, but if we see a little better Stafford, this team may, in fact, be the best team in the league. Stafford is playing kind of underwhelming. If we see, you know, first few weeks Stafford, this team is number one. Because I they were number one on the list for a decent while in the beginning of the season. But Stafford kind of started going back to his, you know, old Lions days. Not saying he was a bad quarterback then, but his stats were awful. And, you know, we've seen hints of that, but... Um, follow the system and they'll be good. Number two, I got the Chiefs. They're just trouncing mediocre teams at this point. They just whooped on the Steelers, whooped on the Raiders. Um, they beat the Chargers in overtime. Great division game. Uh, they're finding random receiver gems like Byron Pringle and Derek Gore. Uh, they weren't even fully healthy against the Steelers. They didn't even have Travis Kelsey and an undrafted cornerback was their leading tackler. Um, it just shows, you know, they're, they're deep. They're, they're clicking now on offense and defense. I think, remember the last few weeks, I was saying, you know, the defense was clicking this week. The offense was clicking this week. Once they click, they're their best team in the AFC. I've said it before. This is the team that will. Um, I'm picking to meet the Colts in the AFC title game. Our Colts are meeting them because the Chiefs are going to be sitting there waiting. Um, yeah, I really think this is your AFC champion. And your NFC champion is the Green Bay Packers. They're the best balance. I'm going to keep saying this until they lose. They're the best balanced team. Uh, they just keep winning. Uh, you know, once playoff time hits, I really think this is this is the team that's going to excel once playoff time, time hits. Um, uh, Rod, this is the best Rodgers crew he's had in a long time, uh, With especially with their secondary. They really haven't had a defense the last three years, it seems, and Rodgers has just been carrying and carrying. Um, and I truly believe we'll see the best form of Rodgers come playoff time. We'll see that MVP MVP form we saw last year. Um, but, yeah, they actually have a defense this time around, and I think they're the most balanced team in the NFL. Um, yeah, sitting at number one, and I think that's the, you know, number one and two, they're Chiefs, Packers. That probably be the Super Bowl, in my opinion. Um, I think, you know, the Cowboys and Rams are – will take on the Packers good and I think the Colts as well they're they're a good team to keep an eye on uh, this is going to be such a fun playoff this is going to be amazing uh, it's, I don't know who we're going to see in the Super Bowl it's going to be great uh, yeah that's your NFL power rankings and that is your show thank you for watching Drake's Corner episode 14 um, congratulations again to Nate Helwig the t-shirt winner um, keep an eye on Go follow my, if you guys can, go follow Drake's Corner Sports on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to do more updates on there with the show. Um, same with TikTok. I'll do some updates on their video, you know, little vlog action. Um, I'm going to try and drop, a, you know, kind of a t-shirt line here soon. Uh, so just keep in touch with my Instagram story. Um, yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, I hope you guys had some great family time, some good gifts. Um it's really a great time for sports right now. I really like it. Um, and I appreciate you, appreciate you guys watching. You're, you guys are my favorite Christmas gift. Ha. Except my record player. Except my record player. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that'll do the show. Thanks to you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you guys next year. Ha, ha, ha.